tongue was not in sight, but in Christ we have the power of hope and of resurrection. And uh, thank you for joining us this morning as we worship together. I'd like to uh, draw your attention to some announcements, important ones actually. Uh, and uh, for you to pray about as well. Uh, as you know, uh, we are relocating. When is the question, but we are. <laughs> and so, uh, please can you pray for a gradual transition? It looks like it's going to happen in January to um, February, not, hopefully not too much into February, but it'll happen probably in January, the actual move. So please pray for a smooth transition. Um, Number two, we have the Lottie Moon Christmas offering in the month of December. Uh, and uh, you, as, if you've been to Cornerstone Church for some time, you understand what this is. This is a time we give to missionaries all around the world. We support the International Mission Board by our convention, the Southern Baptist Convention, and uh, we, it's the one time of the year that we give toward this mission. Well, you can do it any time of the year, but this is the time we focus on given to missionaries. And so throughout the month you can write your checks or your PayPal uh, amount to uh, Cornerstone, but right on the common line, Lottie Moon. Uh, Lottie Moon was a missionary to China back in the early 1900s and uh, she gave her life for the Lord and in memory of her we give offering to missions um, at this time of the year so please have that in mind as we remember the birth of Christ and celebrate we want to remember those who Use the gospel to spread it all over the world. Um, kind of calendar pickup. Uh, we have four calendars out. Yay. So it's for the free to pick up. Uh, we'll see how we can distribute it, but maybe you know, you can come anytime to the church uh, for the office hours during the week or during the weekend to pick up your copy of the calendar. So each family can take one desktop calendar and a wall calendar. And so uh, or you can just take one. Not to <laughs> the better. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, that's there for you. Uh, lastly, want to emphasize the uh, YM uh, Winter Retreat coming up on the 28th to 30th. If you're a youth parent and you need your youth kid needs encouragement, and I know they do, uh, please participate in the youth wave. Uh, we 
winter conference. Uh, it will be a time of, of uh, fellowship, of love, and also of the Word of God. And please pray for our children and for our youth. I also pray for you, children's pastor. We are seeking a pastor at this time. I think that's about it. Um, everything else, please let me refer to your bulletin for more information and for worship info as well. Let's go to the Word of God. We are starting a brand new series this morning. We'll be hearing from the book of James uh, in the month of December and to the month of January. And we're going to call it Show Your Faith. As it's in your bulletin, show your faith. So today we read from James chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. Begin if you can continuously read through this book together in the coming months, this month and next month. James chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 8. And I'll read these verses, and please open your Bible, your Bible, and read along with your heart, with your eyes. Chapter 1, verse 1. James. A servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him, or her, ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him, or her. But let him, her, Ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he or she will receive anything from the Lord. He, she is a double-minded man, unstable in all his her ways. Amen. This is the word of God. I read, uh, you know, he, her, she, or both of them, in the original language, when it's a brother, a daughter, yeah, he, him, or her, uh, it implies both 
genders and so it's a more of a general term I wanted to um, bring out the sense that's in the original word. These days, a lot of us are being tested for the COVID-19 virus, right? Um, you're being probed in your nose. That's how you do it, right? <laughs> uh, I remember in June, uh, I was probed as well. It wasn't the most pleasant experience, but, uh, you know, uh, my family, my entire family, and uh, our church pastors, we all did it because we were getting ready to reopen church, we thought, in June. And we were trying to be responsible citizens. And I know many of you, uh, but maybe not many of you, because you probably don't travel as much, but some of you who have to travel, you are being responsible, right? And you come back from your travels and you self-quarantine for two weeks or so. And so you even get tested for the COVID virus before you um, uh, interact with other people that are around you. And that's the right thing to do as a citizen of this world and also a citizen of heaven who are to set a, a higher standard, who live a higher standard, according to higher standard of holiness, and show it, show it as a light to this world. But you and I do admit that getting the test is not a pleasant experience when something is shoved into your nose. Uh, deeper place, deeper than you've ever thought so something can reach inside your nose. But it is important to have a test. To get these tests, not just coronavirus tests, but your health checkup. Because the most dangerous thing is not knowing the wrong that's in your body. The sickness, the disease, the potential weakness that could be in your body. The, the danger is not knowing that it's there. And we can detect these things through testing, through trials, and through these uh, kits, equipments. And uh, our spirituality is no exception. Your heart and my heart, my, our spirits need to be probed once in a while, maybe every day, to see if, it, if it's not hardened before God. Our spirit is the part that responds to God. That's the part that responds to eternal things. But 
if we have our eyes set on the things of the world for such a long time and not think about God, your heart and my heart could become like heart of stone and not respond to our Father God when He speaks to us, when He wants to speak to us. We want to work through us. We may not respond. And God has given us a lovely test kit to test and probe our spirituality, our hearts. And that test kit is called Trials of life. It is called the troubles of life. The test of faith. The fiery faith. Sometimes fiery test of faith uh, is the kit that God has. God gives us, allows us. Maybe every day. For some people, this test comes in the form of financial difficulties. For others, it comes in, in the form of physical difficulties and sicknesses. Weaknesses. For others, it could come in the form of having to work with somebody that you don't really like. Have you had that ex experience? There are difficult people to work with. And you realize that God has put you together to work together. It's a test. <laughs> of your faith, of your patience, right? And we realized this year, 2020, that God sends tests of faith in the form of a pandemic. And see, He wants to see how we respond. In uncertain situations, when the, the ground is shaking under, from the, under uh, foundation is shaking under our feet, how is my child responding? God allows these trials of faith. Every day. But it gives us comfort to know that every person of God, including Jesus Christ Himself, was tested. Every one of their uh, faith ancestors. They had to go through a trial, a test, troubling times in their faith life. And so, if this is something that test of faith is something that God allows us to experience and even want us to go through, we need to, we must understand and be able to cope with the trials of life, the trying times that we are encountering. So that's the question I'm raising this morning. How? How can you and I as brothers and sisters 
and the sons and daughters of God, could we endure even joyfully in trying and troubling times? And we're reading from the book of James. The book of James will look at, you know, faith and wisdom and action. And these things are important to, for us to have in our heart as we finish off this year and as, as we start off the new year. It was a fresh start with action and faith in our hearts and with our lives. The first answer to this question is found in verses 1 to 4. How could we be joyful? Even joyful, how can we endure these trying times? The first answer is this. Keep your eyes on the perfection of your faith. Can you say it together wherever you are? Keep your eyes, keep your eyes on the perfection of your faith. On the perfection of your faith. Let's talk about James a little bit. Oh, I miss James. Oh, praise me. But today let's talk about the book of James. In verse 1, he's introduced as such. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. James calls him a servant. This was a uh, interesting choice of word because James was the brother of Jesus. That's this James. This James is the brother of Jesus. You know, younger brother, of course. Uh, and uh, this James was the same James that we saw in the book of Acts when he, when he was leading the church council back in Acts chapter, I believe, uh, 14. And uh, when they had this conflict, he was the moderator, he was the spiritual leader and guidance that the church needed. So you could imagine the authority James must have had for the, all the Christians in the Roman Empire, right? He was the senior pastor of First Baptist Jerusalem Church, and he was also a brother to the Lord Jesus. And, and now he's telling and encouraging the followers of Jesus Christ with this important letter. So I can imagine the authority of writing this letter for all the Christians in the land. And he addresses them in verse 1 as such. To the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. 
dispersion or the Greek diaspora, right? All those twelve tribes were scattered all across the world. Probably James had in mind the Old Testament picture of the Babylonian captivity when the old Jewish and Israelite the, the, the people were taken captive to the Babylonian Empire and they were scattered all over. They were trying to, the Babylonians were trying to get rid of the people group as an identity. Get rid of their identity. They scattered them. But they remained faithful and they sought after God in those fiery times. James saw the Christians, now the new Israel, the church, scattered all across the Roman Empire, the new 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 Babylonian Empire, the Roman Empire, and he tried to encourage them to keep up the faith in in trying and firing times of faith. And so we find in verse 2, the first command that James gave. This was a surprising command. James understood what they were going through, but what he was demanding was mission impossible. Verse 2, count it all joy, my brother. When you meet trials of various kinds, what the... James, you know what we're going through, right? We're not just going through, you know, are you gonna lock down or just economic hardship and pandemic? We're going through calcium. We are, if we are caught by the government, we are putting calcium and fed to lions, the tigers, and the leopards. We are hiding in the catacombs in the, uh, the, the uh, underground burial sites in Rome were uh, secretly worshipping God, dear Jesus, and we are fear, in fear of being caught every day. You know this, James, and you're telling us be happy about it, be joyful in these trying times. So this first statement was enough to grab their full attention. How? How can we be joyful in this fiery trial of faith? I'm about to die. Any moment. In the first command, uh, the, the, the use of the reason how to, how to be joyful. Verse 3. For you know, this is the reason, for you know that the test 